there are plenty of benchmarks and reviews talking about Intel graphics cards when it came to gaming, but I really wanted to know how well it worked as a content creator, especially for YouTube editing. And all you really get is synthetic benchmarks and not really what the real world experience is here. And timeline performance for the most part is okay. Um, it's usually smooth. I usually get it where it's playing back usually at the correct frame rate. I do notice sometimes that there'll be a little bit of stutter or there'll be a little bit of a pause between me playing and pausing on the timeline and scrubbing through the timeline can happen a little bit. I figure that's just kind of optimization and things that kind of need to be updated as they kind of continue to make the drivers better. Now I do a little bit of color grading here, not too much. And I do sometimes need to put things like a small graphic on there or I need to blur something out. And for the most part, it handles those type of GPU intensive uh, tools pretty well for the most part. And you can play those back in real time. You can see when it kind of lags a little bit, um, especially if I do anything that's picture in picture, it will kind of struggle with that. And I definitely can see it struggling because it is, it is 4K. So this is something that this card probably isn't designed so much to be doing a lot of 4K processing with that. Now this is officially the Acer Predator Bifrost Intel A770 GPU. Um, as far as physically how the card looks, I actually like the design of it. Um, it it's much smaller than my 3070 Ti, as you can see here, and, and it has a nice sort of sleek look to it. And I like that it's not overstated with too much RGB. I like a little bit, and I kind of like the way they kind of did it with this card here. There's one small fan and there's one big fan, and you only really hear that big fan when you first boot up your system, you kind of hear that fire up. But other than that, it's typically pretty quiet. Now I have the 16 gigabyte version here. And that's one of the things that attracted me to this card because for my workflow, which is, I wanna stress that that's how I'm gonna kind of focus this video is basically based on my workflow. I added in a lot of 4K and having that extra VRAM on there is gonna be really nice. You also wanna make sure your system has a rebar on it, a resizable bar, make sure it's turned on if it does support it because that's really where the Intel cards are gonna shine. If you don't have that, it's not gonna probably work as well. So make sure you have something like that. I also want to let you know that I'm using an AMD um, system on here. I'm using actually the 5900X here on an AM4 platform. So I can't really test Intel Deep Link. But now, as far as exporting goes, export times are pretty fast for the most part. Um, I usually export H.265 now these days. Sometimes I export 264, but that's kind of rare these days now with the new card. And that does export out pretty well and pretty fast for the most part. I did notice a 30 second bump when I took my uh, capture card out, and I'll be talking about capture cards in just a moment related to this GPU. When I took that out and I was, I was allowing the system to have a full uh, PCI Express 16 bandwidth all the way through, 30 seconds faster in terms of exporting out. I did notice that one thing using H.265. I did test out AV1 in terms of just encoding out to that. It's nice that it's fast, but I don't actually have a need for that right now because that's really right now related a lot more to streaming and I don't do a whole lot of streaming. So if you are an AV1, this could be a good secondary card if you're a streamer to be able to take advantage of that AV1 encoding and decoding codec. Now I want to talk about the capture cards, which I mentioned before. I'm using the Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II. I've been using that for a good four or five years now. Right now it's not officially supporting the Intel cards, you wanna kinda of keep that in mind. And while it does work and you'll see the card show up, it definitely with mixed results. So far, the only thing I was able to consistently work is the Nintendo Switch, and it's really at only 1080p 60. It says that, but I don't think it's really kind of capturing at 60 frames per second. I think it's doing a little bit less than that. And that's the only one I've been able to get to work consistently in OBS and in the Elgato 4K capture utility. If I try to capture in 4K, only thing it will let me do is 4K 30. And pretty much it doesn't really even capture it. It, it either times out or it, it says it's capturing and it doesn't really work or there's a whole lot of weird things that go with that. So I really think that's something we're gonna have to wait for Elgato and those folks out there with capture cards to kind of officially support Intel. Now I did have a couple of bugs with it. I had at least one time where it would kind of freeze and sort of lock up, fill up all my video memory and then fill up all my regular memory, which I have 64 gigs of that and I just couldn't do anything and had to reboot the system. That happened on at least two occasions. So I think there was some sort of bug that might've kind of happened. So another weird quirk that I had is that I couldn't change this to use 10 bit video on my monitor. You know, my monitor supports it. Right now it only will allow 10 bit through HDMI, but not through DisplayPort, which I can't find kind of odd because older NVIDIA cards are able to do that without a problem. So I think that's something that Intel just needs to send a driver or something out there to be able to kind of fix and do. I'd like to see them get their software to be one thing instead of these two things you sort of have to manage, which is another sort of weird thing. But it's, that's kind of what kind of describes the experience. It's a, it's really nice, but there's some little weird things here and there. You notice know, some things that they kind of need to kind of 
fix and kind of tweak here, but I really do see the potential of these cars and would say, I would recommend kind of trying this out, especially if you're on a 1080p workflow, this could be the card you can kind of go with considering the price of GPUs that are out there. This might be something to go with and, and sort of check out. Just be aware if you're using a capture card, you probably want to stick to Nvidia or, or AMD in that sort of case and just use it as a secondary card. Also watch the pricing on these because I bought this at 400 bucks, which isn't too bad a pricing, but during this time while I had it, it dropped all the way down to $320. So there are definitely sales to be had. And if you can get this around $320, even below $300 price point, I think you have really good value here for something that's a first generation product that's only going to get better over time. And you can see Intel is going to really kind of make things better. You just want to see it kind of tweak the performance a little bit. I think you can get some creators on these cards. Now, speaking of GPUs and cards and stuff like that, I am testing out another card, which is the 4070 Ti, and I'll have a video on that that replaces this video here. If you're interested in checking that out from this sort of same sort of creator perspective, and if you're interested in that, wait for that video to be up there to replace the recommended video. Till then, see you in the next one.